All right, precious brothers and sisters, March 15th, 2013. I don't want to make a long video. I just wanted to come on here and thank all of you, each and every one of you, for the outpouring of love, prayers, and support regarding the uh, situation I spoke of yesterday. I mentioned in a video. I want to thank you for the emails, the personal messages, the phone calls. I want to thank longtime viewers and subscribers of mine, Kit, and her husband for your gift to my ministry. Now I want you to know that I am not down. I am not in despair. I am up singing praises to my Father in heaven. I am rejoicing that I'm even found worthy to be persecuted for Jesus' namesake. You know, when you expose the darkness and you expose the enemy and you come out here, you put yourself out here in this format and you tell the truth, you expose the darkness. You are going to face severe persecution. The enemy is going to come at you with everything he has. He, along with his band of demons, are going to fire every flaming dart and arrow upon you. You will be under spiritual warfare, spiritual attack when you expose the darkness. Now, regarding my situation, uh, just so in case you're not, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I, was, I had a call off work the other day. Now, I believe this is all because I'm exposing the Jesuits for who they really are. The Jesuit order. Uh, the secret society of the Jesuits and they're like the Illuminati and I'm exposing the supreme leader the black pope and I've done a history on the black popes and now the new pope uh, who chose the name Francis the first is a high ranking Jesuit and I come under a severe attack so I I'm off to work uh, earlier in the week and uh, my car wouldn't go. I got, I'm trying to get up to 30 miles an hour and it's making this terrible, terrible noise. So I get a tow truck, I get it into the shop. I find out I need a transmission and another computer controlled part and uh, it is very, very expensive and very costly. So I, you know, what do I do now? I can't get to work. Um, so I call my work, I call my boss. I explain the situation. I explain that in all the years that I worked for you, I never took a vacation while all other employees were taking uh, a week vacation, two week, uh, two weeks vacations. I never once asked for any time off. And here I find myself in the situation. I need to get my transmission fixed. They're not going to do it overnight. My car is going to be tied up. I got to come up with the money to get it fixed. They pretty much told me, if you don't go to work, you are fired. So it appears that that is the situation. But let's look at the good side. If I am fired, then I have more time to work my ministry, more time to be with you. So I should know by the end of the day, if I am fired, and it appears that way, starting next week, starting Monday, every day, we're going live at Tiny Chat, 12 o'clock noon, and we are going to have a live, live broadcast and a live service. So I don't want you to think that I am defeated and I'm down and broken. I'm standing and I am jumping for joy and I'm singing praises to my Father in heaven. I'm going to take you real quick. I just want to remind you, in the book of Acts, Peter and the uh, apostles. In Acts, um, let me find it. Um, hold on. <laughs> Here we are in Acts chapter 5. And it begins at verse 40. Now, they were put in, Peter was put in prison and John for preaching uh, the word of God, preaching Jesus and remember for healing the man uh, who was born uh, from the womb, uh, he couldn't walk. And because of this and preaching the name of Jesus, they were put in prison. An angel came and opened up the cell door and they were out there preaching in the street and they were beaten now and sent away do not preach no more in the name of Jesus 
they were jumping for joy. They were singing. They were preaching. They were shouting the name of Jesus. They, they were just so happy that they were found worthy. That they were found worthy to be persecuted for Jesus' name. Jesus tells us that if you follow me, you will be persecuted for my namesake. And I rejoice at this. To even be found worthy to face this right now. Now I want you all to understand, persecution comes in many ways. I was back, I was doing my uh, series on Nimrod and exposing that darkness. And remember I fell and I injured my shoulder and it's still not right. There's something really seriously wrong there. But I want to assure you very quickly, very soon now, I feel it to my very being, amen, that we are going to have brand new bodies, brand new spiritual bodies. No more pain. No more sickness. The enemy can no longer fire their flaming darts and arrows upon us. We will have new spiritual bodies. I love you guys. We are so close now to the rapture of the church. But any time we are going to hear that trumpet call of God, the shout from the archangel, the dead in Christ will rise first. And we which remain will be caught up in the air in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and I don't want any bad comments on uh, the rapture of the church and it's nowhere to be found I do not please don't leave any bad comments everything is happening so quickly now and the rapture of the church I want you to understand there is no time frame like Daniel's timeline there is no timeline or time frame that frame that can happen at any moment in the twinkling of an eye so I want you to remember I want you to remember and go and read the parable of the ten virgins I want you to read Revelation 3 the letters to the seven churches the church of Philadelphia that is removed before the tribulation I want you to understand that nowhere after Revelation 3, do we find the church? There's no more mention of the church. I want you to think of Elijah and Enoch. They did not die a natural death. They were caught up. John the Revelator. The voice had come up hither. He was caught up. Rejoice at this time. Bible prophecy, I've never seen anything like it as we are looking right now. In 2013, the new pope uh, takes the name Francis the first after uh, Saint Francis of Assisi, whose name was Peter. He, uh, his parents were Italian, so Peter the Roman fits perfectly. Petrus Romanus, the last pope, he very well could be the false prophet of the Book of Revelation. We've got Barack Obama at the time of Passover going to Israel they have now created an ice sculpture for him they're going to give him some type of uh, an award we've got meteors and asteroids racing across the sky we've got earthquakes in diverse places more animals more fish washing ashore today the Euphrates River is drying up amen we have massive massive numbers of quakes and tremors in California during the time that the conclave were locked away in their secret chambers, there's a man dressed in sackcloth out in the pouring rain. We come to find out before the world even knew who the new pope was or that he would take the name Francis I. We find out that this monk is of the Franciscan order. Brothers and sisters, we need to come together to love one another but you, you've got to listen to the watchman I've been a watchman a long time don't trust don't put your trust in any man test the spirits test the spirits it's time to go home there will be many in the world go out in the world wolves in sheep's clothing I love you guys and as far as the prophecies of the popes a lot of people don't want to follow that it's not biblical the Bible says in the last days 
young men shall have visions, old men shall dream dreams.